We're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech Talks here on a given Wednesday. I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome to the show. Today is Community Matters, and it is Portraits of Lanai, and it is about a teacher extraordinaire, namely Sandy Patterson, co-director of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts, and of course, Alberta <laughs> DeGetley, and they are in a garden in a beautiful place in Lanai. Uh, great to see you guys. I'm so delighted you're together talking to us from the Nye. Alberta, take it away. Hi, Jay. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, we're sitting outside. This is, and it's one of our first outside shows. We've had 50 mile an hour winds over this past week, so we might be a little bit breezy. It's, it's maybe about 50 miles an hour, if that. But I want, wanted to introduce my really good friend, Sandy Patterson who is just absolutely one of my all-time favorite teachers. You know, in every child's life, there's one special teacher who stands out. And for me, when I moved back to Lenai in 1996, Sandy was teaching kindergarten. kindergarten. And I was very fortunate to be able to spend time in her class. And I really felt that I had gone back to kindergarten myself. Her classes, oh, it's so exciting. The kids would come in in the morning and they would just be running in to see what activities she had planned for them. So let me introduce my very dear friend, Sandy Patterson. Thanks for being with us, Sandy. Thank you. This is, I feel very honored to be here. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about, about yourself, because I know you came to Lanai when your little boy was two years old. He was a year old uh, and my oldest boy was four. Um, and now my youngest is a senior, so I've been here 16 years, and boy, that time has passed fast. <laughs> but I've been teaching for over 25 years total. I taught in Camp Third, um, King Kamehameha the Third, and Lahaina for about 10 years before moving here. So, um, and um, but I love Lanai. Love Lanai. There's no, no place like Lanai. Well, you know, besides being just involved in school, Sandy is very involved in the community at large. So tell us about, well, today she was supposed to have gone down to Shipwreck Beach with her two dogs and with another dear friend. And very fortunately, tell us what happened to you today. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to drive my big truck down and uh, and we were getting ready to go. But when I drove to school, Alberta had called and I said, okay, I'll, I'll come in and do the interview. And thank goodness, because when I got in my truck, my brakes had gone out. Ooh. And so I don't want to. I'm glad I wasn't driving down the winding road to shipwreck with no brakes. So I think it was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy says that whenever her son uh, Cameron, who's a young adult now, but whenever he comes back home from for vacations, he always has these great adventures down at shipwreck. Oh yes, he's um, the monk seals and the dogs. The dogs meeting the monk seals and uh, catching an alua and sacrificing his fishing pole. Um, instead, it got wrapped around the dog's legs, and instead of sacrificing the dog, he was nice enough to sacrifice the fishing pole. But every time he comes back, he has some story to tell about the dogs and shipwreck and and uh, fishing and hiking and doing all his things here. Can you tell us a little about shipwreck? Where is it, and what what is its significance in Lanai? Where, uh, where we are? Shipwreck. Oh, oh shipwreck. shipwreck! Um, shipwreck's down on the on the other side, on the windy side, and um, there's a shipwreck out there that I thought it was an actual shipwreck, but evidently I believe it was after World War II. Um, the Navy came and dropped it off. Thought that would be a good place to leave it and park it. So it's kind of a landmark place to go. It's the remote part of the island. It's a good place to go look for shells walk along the beach and look for stuff and uh, swim and dive. <laughs> well, you know, Sandy's got on this beautiful shell necklace and she dove for all of those shells herself. So tell us about the jewelry business. Um, the jewelry making. Jewelry making, yeah. It, um, going and looking for the shells is, is probably the best part. 
<laughs> and um, I, I go with my boys. They go out spear fishing, and I look for for the shells. I have secret spots all around the island. They're getting harder and harder to find the big ones. Um, but um, I'm hoping to collect enough to possibly do this as a business when I retire from teaching. <laughs> if she's we're ever going to let her retire. <laughs> <laughs> still having fun, so I'm still in there in the classroom. It, you know, Sandy had, had um, some information about her teaching career, and one of the things that she has written here is, in her classes, she always try, try something new and scary every day. It can be as simple as, something new could be as simple as eating spicy alipo beef or driving a big truck in the sand. <laughs> Which is very scary. <laughs> Um, so, what kind of scary things do your kids come up with at school? Oh, well, just trying something new that they've never tried before. Um, maybe reading a, a novel as opposed to a, a picture book. Um, trying some big words, trying new, um, trying to investigate new things. Um, and just going out there and being adventuresome. And, um, that's what I kind of encourage. Just keeps you on your toes and keeps you young and keeps your brain going. Um, yeah. So, so you, you were a kindergarten teacher for a long, long time. For a long time, yes. And now you're teaching fourth grade. Yes. So what made you switch? What was the transitional point? Well, at, Cam, at King Kamehameha Third in Lahaina, I was um, the gifted and talented, the art teacher, the remedial reading teacher. I taught grades K all the way up to and so, um, and then when I got to Lanai, I continued to teach kindergarten, but then I stopped and I subbed for a couple of years in between there, and got to see the big spectrum from high school all the way down to kindergarten. My favorite group of children are the fourth graders. They, um, they're, they're independent and, and yet so excited about learning. They come in every day just really excited about learning. And all you do, all I do, is set forth the activity or the question, and then I get out of the way and watch them go. So that's what I love about fourth grade. And it, you get to teach, um, you know, a little Hawaiiana mixed in there too. So, what are the exciting things, you know, as a parent when you when you get a teacher like Sandy and your child comes home from school every day so enthused about what is happening in the classroom? Sandy bought some some. Uh, things to share with us. She's got these books that her students are working on. So can you tell us about these? Well, this is our second year doing this, and um, this is where the kids get to write and publish and illustrate. So as you can see, this is hot off the presses. This one is by Beretta Bradford, and before he illustrated this or wrote a story, he told me, Miss Patterson, I cannot draw. So that goes back to the try something new and scary and um, telling him he can. So he wrote, he, his dad works at the stables up at Kowale. So he wrote about his experiences. He drew all these, he drew all these pictures. Wow. And this is a child who said, I can't draw. And so um, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite stories. They're all, where do you get these published? We get them through, it's called Student Treasures. And um, you fill out a packet and the kids, write rough drafts and edit and then type them on the computer and then we print and then they illustrate them and then I send them in each package. So every child in their fourth and fifth grade will have their individual books and then classrooms in kindergarten through third will have class books. But um, this one is by a student who's been here, I believe, since kindergarten. And then um, we have little Ami Asakawa. Who, wait, wait, before you oh, go to Ami. Oh, I gotta tell you about, about uh, <laughs> Where are they? Isn't he one of the youngest cowboys in the state? I guess he is, and he's a polo player as well. Polo player? Yes. And does, yeah. Um, you know, his dad manages the stables of, of the quality and is a roper, cattleman, uh, loves rodeos. So both he and his younger brother, how old is his brother? Um, I think his younger brother is second grade. Uh, but they do um, not calf riding, but sheep riding. Yes, they do calf. <laughs> but it's yeah. really amazing to see these kids um, on a on a ca uh, cattle that young calf that's yeah. running away out of the zoo. But just 
amazing, uh, amazing family. So what about this? And and back to the, this, this is what I love about this project is the, this, I don't tell the students what to write about. I give them ideas and um, a lot of them pick what they, what they love. And that's what makes this so special um, to me is it's about their, what, what their interests are. So they're originating from Utah. Yeah. And this next little girl is Japanese. Yes, and she's her from Japan. And her life story is so big. She had to write my life story one and my life story two to continue <laughs> it. So she's got a lot. But this little girl came. Um, Ami came this year. Her parents are Japanese, but um, she grew up in Seattle, and then they moved back to Japan right after the tsunami hit. So this is a story. So she's bilingual. Too. Yes, she is. And so this is a story about um, her life in Seattle and then moving back to Japan and talking about her grandmother and, and the tsunami. So this was... Um, what did she say about the tsunami? Um, so she actually saw the tsunami? No, they, they were in Seattle and they were planning to move back. Um, her husband, I mean her husband, her father is the um, sushi chef, chef for Nobu. And, and so he was going back to Japan to take care of his mom and, and possibly could open a restaurant. Um, so um, she doesn't really say too much about it. Um, it's, uh, what's that, the clan? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's her, her family and um, yeah. What, they, they, she didn't actually witness the tsunami. They had, they were planning to fly back a tsunami to, to help um, their, her grandmother and then the tsunami hit. Oh. And then, um, so. So Sandy, what, what is it about these kids, you know, that's different than a like group of kids, uh, say, in, in a like class in Honolulu or, or maybe the Big Island? I mean, what, what is special on Lanai about teaching these kids? What's the difference uh, in the way the school works? in the way the kids work and the whole experience works. Can you distinguish Lanai from other places in the state? I think what's really unique about Lanai is we really know our students. Um, it, the island is small, our school is small, um, most of the classes are real small, and so we get an opportunity to really know them. We know their families, we know their backgrounds, we know their interests, we know where they're from, and I think that's what makes Lanai unique is knowing that you see the families at the at the market you see them in the community you see them um, coming into school um, and we really get to know the kids and what makes these kids special is um, they bring so much to the classroom things they already know whether it's fishing stories from grandpa um, yeah. Uh, polo but yeah they just bring all of that into the classroom so I feel like I'm learning just as much from them as, as they're learning and what about your personal experience, Sandy? I mean, how is it different to be a teacher there than a teacher, say, elsewhere in the state or on the mainland? Uh, I, I think I know half the answer already, but why don't you try to give us the picture from your point of view? Um, I think the families. Um, I taught in California, and I, I didn't really get to know the families. It was very... Um, um, the families lived outside of the school where I taught. Uh, I mean, they lived near the school, but I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't a tight-knit community like, like we are in Lanai. Um, Lahaina even is big and bigger than Lanai, and it's hard to get to know all the families in Lahaina. Um, well, you know, that's one of the things I think that about modern education, especially young, young children uh, education, is that a lot of kids are latchkey kids, you know, they, they, um, they don't. They don't. They're not. They're not able to share their education with their parents. Their parents don't necessarily get involved in their education. The teachers don't know the parents. It's all very nuclear age, uh, and the result is, you know, there's a certain isolation between education and family. It sounds like there's a big difference between that and what you're doing. Uh, and uh, I don't know, Alberta. Can you pursue that after we come back from this break? Sure. This is uh, Sandy Peterson. She's the uh, Patterson. She's the co-director uh, co of the uh, of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts. I'm sure we're going to hear plenty about that. 
Um, this is uh, portraits of the Nye. We're, we're examining the Nye one portrait at a time with Alberta de Gently. And uh, we're going to take a short break now. Uh, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. On March 27th, uh, at the YWCA downtown, Lani Akea, uh, we're having a luncheon program, a luncheon panel program uh, we call the Midterm Legislative Report. We're going to present our 2014 legislative midterm update uh, featuring Bob Toyofuku of Hawaii Advocates as our moderator and a panel of leading state finance officials uh, who will tell you about what's going on in the legislature, about money, this session, that's really important. Senator David Ige, Chair of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, Representative Aaron Ling Johansson, Co-Vice Chair of the House Finance Committee, Representative Sylvia Luke, Chair of the House Finance Committee, uh, Calbert Young, State Budget and Finance Director, all the people who are very important, who know about the state fiscal policy, the state finances this session. You know, they say we have a spare $884 million. How much do we really have? The Council of Revenues changed its mind about projections. And how are we going to spend that money or not? What effect will our you know, current $40 billion of unfunded liabilities have on all of this? And in election year, what are the real priorities that are going to determine the money bills and the final result of the 2014 legislature as far as you are concerned? We'll cover current f fiscal issues, bills of interest, interest to the business community, and we'll look at the provisions, political dynamics, probabilities, price tags of crossover and passage this year. It'll be very interesting to find out what is going to happen here uh, as far as your bills are concerned and as far as state initiatives are concerned. It's an essential program for anybody who wants to know the fiscal state of the state or if you want to network with the legislators and like-minded attendees uh, who are likewise interested in the subject. Sign up on thinktechhawaii.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're having Chima Real over there in Lanai, Lanai City, with, uh, with Alberta De Gently, Lady About Town. Uh, by Skype with her guest, uh, Sandy Patterson, who was the co-director of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts and a teacher there. And we're stepping through all the people in Lanai one by one in a series that Alberta calls Portraits of Lanai. Sandy is one of those portraits, and we're examining her relationship with, with education in Lanai, which is a really eye-opening experience to know how it works. Uh, back to you, actually, Alberta. You know, Jay, during the break, you're asking about how Lanai is different, and you had asked Sandy, you know, why is Lanai so different from other schools in the state? But I think the difference is we know our children. Uh, the parent, we see the parents, teachers see parents in the stores. They see the, the children that they teach out in the playground. Uh, we sit together at church. We play together at the beach. It's, it's all, you know, everybody talks about Lanai as being one big family, and it really is so, but if you look at, you know, the two, two students that, books that we have talked about, the two previous students, they are fairly new to Lanai, so our community is changing, and I think people are embracing the new people who are coming to Lanai, because I like the title of this book the time I moved to Lanai. So it's another new student. Yes, well, he's been in the, um, this is Mark. He's been in our um, school since, I believe, second grade, but he's talking about when he moved from the Philippines, his whole family. Oh. And we do have a lot of um, uh, kids who are, are coming in as ESL students. And so this was, um, this was kind of a fun book for him to write, for me to see it from a perspective of, of a, and there's little Mark right there. How many, do you know how many uh, siblings in his family? Um, in Mark's, not yeah. not too sure, but we have quite a large ESL population. And uh, um, I know other schools in Hawaii are, are their populations of, of students speaking other languages is rising also. Uh, because on this, on chapter one, he writes, I was born and raised in Manila in the Philippines. My mom and dad wanted to move to Hawaii because they wanted me to have a better education. Mark and Ian were my best friends in Manila. 
and they were sad to see me go. But you know, the story has been repeated since the 1930s. People have packed up, moved to Lanai, hoping for a better education, more advantages for their families. And we have had uh, doctors, lawyers, just uh, a, a, a judge, all kinds of people have been raised on Lanai and have done really, really well. So it's really nice to see a young man like this knowing that he's come to really the land of golden opportunities. Yes. And in these families, education is really important. And you see that in their diligence to do their homework. Yay, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> Another book that Sandy bought to share with us is The Songs of Lanai. And I have to say something about this. This could not be possible without Matt Glickstein, our awesome musical director for LAFA, and Devin Costales, who is a senior at our school, who um, has shared his musical talents and talk about extraordinaire. This boy can write songs. So I see, hopefully one day we'll see him on the Grammys. But they come into my room and we do language arts and uh, songwriting about things that the kids are doing. So um, the first song they wrote is when we were doing swimming lessons, they wrote about our new community pool that um, got fixed up and ready for them. So the first song is about called Love That Pool. Um, and I'm not even gonna try to sing it because the CD will come out. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy the CD. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is one that makes me cry every time. Devin Costales wrote, wrote most of the lyrics, but the kids help him um, coming up with ideas. So I just have to share one verse. Um, this is my home, loving every minute and hour, jumping off the tires at Kamal Pau Harbor. So basically the kids wrote about, they brainstormed all the things they do in the night and they put it together in a song and it's giving me chicken skin right now. Hopefully I don't tear up on, on camera. But, um, and then we had illustrations, but this is one of the, talk about why Lanai is special. This is, this song says it all. My island, my, uh, my home island. And um, it's several pages long and they write about going to the beach and driving up down to shipwreck and um, holy hua. And then here is um, the last page. And then the next song is um, the sustainability song, which um, is our theme for the year, sustainability. So we, we're doing project-based learning and the students, um, we have um, little mini aquaponics tanks in our classroom and the students um, are growing wheatgrass using the to use kid language, the pee and poo of the fish to fertilize the wheatgrass. And they um, harvested their wheatgrass on Valentine's Day and we made wheatgrass shakes, which they insisted they were not going to eat um, until they tried it. <laughs> and they wrote their own recipes and we had a blender in the classroom. And so, um, yeah, so this, the, our sustainability song we're going to share at the author's fair. Yeah, the science when's fair. the author's fair going to be? Oh, the author's fair will be May 9th. Um, on a Friday night and we're hoping the whole community comes out um, to Lanai High and Elementary. It's going to be kind of a back open house kind of a thing where you can go and visit um, the elementary classrooms. classrooms. And, and actually we are encouraging parents not just to go into kindergarten if you have a student in kindergarten, but to visit all the other classrooms because we have some incredibly hardworking, awesome teachers that teach at our school. and. Uh, once you go go in their classroom, it's 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 amazing what they do with the kids. That's great. You know, the whole school now is moving to this project-based learning. Yes. And uh, one of the things that they're trying to do is butterflies. They oh, we we saw an article written by the UH um, Hawaii professor about how the Kamehameha butterfly, which is our state insect. Which on a side note, when I asked my students what the state insect was, they said cockroach. <laughs> so they've been researching the Kamehameha butterfly and what it, what they eat, and what we could do to help here in Lanai. So we're going to try and plant some mamaki plants in our garden and create um, some pollinators and a special place for these butterflies to live. And this was a poster created by one of my art student, uh, one of my students who, art of course. Is it signed? It. Um, I'm not sure. I just okay, grabbed them. Okay. Oh, uh, Sarah. Oh, this is my aid. So I grabbed hers instead of students. Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's her last? Chun. 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 Oh, yes. I know. I know. Oh, she's fabulous. She's 
incredible. And so, what ages are these kids? Um, fourth grade. Um, but this is this she was this is an aide in my in my classroom. Here's here's more. In fact, I think this is Mateo's Pele. Mateo. Mateo. Yeah. Oh wow! So, That's um, nice. This is um, we've been learning about the legends and stories of Lenai, and so these are some Pele drawings. You know, on a side note, a few years ago, Sarah was in the Miss Lenai contest, and she, and she did so well. She was so beautiful. And she's just turned into a very, very gracious young lady. So nice to yeah. see her in school. She's beautiful inside, and she like, radiates. She's really, really nice. Yes. Now, well, who is this? Did we do this this one? one is, I was trying to look. I think it's Pumehana. No, this is Renzi. Renzi. Renzi met now. He's been here. His family's been here for quite a while. Renzi Manuel. Oh, yeah. Yes. So this is his Pele. Um, and as you can see, with a uh, not to put in a little plug or to put no, in a little put in plug, a plug, put in a plug, <laughs> get all of these wonderful art materials that the students use in their books and their science projects. Um, I have all of the teachers at our school. Well, a lot of them use um, donors choose. So I have a new project out there, and thank you for all the people who donated for our um, aquaponics tanks. We have six tanks bubbling in the classroom right now, and it wouldn't have been possible without the donations of the community and um this is the new one awesome art supplies for awesome artists where so, did they find this this is on donor this is from donors, donors choose. choose so if you go to donorschoose.org you can see all of the um projects that teachers in our that they the might whole state right yeah that, well actually it's like the whole nation um but you can look up your child's teacher and find out um projects that they're doing in their classroom that are on that they need donations for. Have, have your kids been to Oahu? Have they been in other places around the state? I mean, do um, they have a sort of state consciousness? Do you know? Do they have a a, a national consciousness? Uh, and you know, in a small island, uh, in a small you know sort of family education system like you're describing, uh, do they get out enough to know? Do they have the same level of sort of you know, global consciousness that the kids in a bigger city would have? Well, in my opinion, it could be better. Um, I, I wish I could take them on more field trips. We did just finish a field trip to take them to see the Lion King over in Oakland. That's that, great. That, they got to have a backstage tour and um, got to see that, that most amazing musical. Um, and I wish, you know, I wish I could take them it, it's so expensive to travel uh, to even to even get from I want to take my my students now to the airport for a tour of the airport um, and just getting the logistics of getting kids from point A to point B is hard here in Lanai it's it, we don't have a bus mm. so we we um Paloma's been extremely generous uh, um with their transportation and supporting teachers in that but it's it's hard for them to get the big picture. It must be very gratifying for you, though, because you know you become a very important person in their lives. Um, you you deliver, you know, to the extent uh, that you can, a world consciousness to them. You're you're kind of uh, you know their conduit to the outside world in some ways, and so it must be very gratifying to sort of breathe life into their intellect that way, at that age especially. You know, on Maui, in, on Maui, they have the Nameli contest for high, um, elementary school students. Mm -hmm. And when Sandy was a kindergarten <laughs> teacher, I will never forget. <laughs> she wanted, to, it was the first time yeah. we had ever taken a group of students to Nameli. And Sandy said she was going to do it. So not only did she teach them the song, she corralled all of the parents and volunteers like me to do the costumes. <laughs> so costumes that we produced them and oh we did all kinds of things we made them out of sheets if i yes. remember and we yeah yeah but they're all uh hand batik they ended up just being so beautiful but this is why i say she's such an extraordinary teacher because she takes the time and effort to step beyond just the classroom you just grab up everybody. You're worse than I am. 
The Extraordinary Teacher, Teacher Extraordinaire is the title of our show. And it's all about uh, Sandy Patterson, uh, who is the um, co-director of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts. And she, uh, she's with our host in Lanai. Uh, they join us by Skype, Al Alberta DeGetley, uh, journalist, uh, farmer, and lady about town. And when we come back from this next break, I, I wonder if you guys, uh, Sandy, if, I wonder if you could tell us, you know, what the challenges are. Um, because, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's the, um, the Garrison Keeler thing? You know, is, are all the children above average? <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> what, what are the challenges you have to cope with in order to do what you want to do in terms of educating them? Uh, we'll be right back after this break here on Portraits of Lanai. Castle and Cook, Hawaii. Investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics. Empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone. Bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone programs to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives to design a flexible and forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Energy, the state's energy and efficiency program created to help Hawaii's residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, attached to DBED, is the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're Think Tech Talks here on a given Wednesday. We're, we're having portraits of Lanai. We're talking about a teacher extraordinaire, uh, namely Sandy Patterson, the co-director of L the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts, with our host in Lanai, Alberta DeJetley, journalist, farmer, and lady about town. So Alberta, take it away, where are we now? Okay, you're asking about challenges in a small rural community like Lanai. But rural communities like well, like the schools of Molokai and school in Hano, uh, the challenge we face is shared numbers because school funds are allocated per student. So when you have a school with a thousand students, you know, or a, a well, how many do we have here? We have less we have than 600, but that's a K-12 school. K-12, yeah. okay, so we have six, 700 max. And then we're competing with dollar funds with a school like in Pearl City where they have 500 in the graduating class. Yeah. Numbers-wise, we end up with this much compared to what they get. So resources, funding is always a problem. And I think a lot of the legislators are aware of this problem and I try to uh, make it more balanced so that small schools like Lanai are, um, can receive extra funds. You know, the athletic clubs uh, in $100,000 they got from donors for Molokai and Lanai because our kids have to travel. They have to travel to go anywhere. It's not a matter of, you know, mom and dad can, can volunteer to drive the kids to the next game. We have to put our kids on the ferry or on a plane. We have to have them bed down in, in gyms, mainly. Um, transportation, wherever they're going, food. The cost per child, per family, becomes really, really burden, a burden. Yes. And part of the thing that I see too, besides you know, be, being able to send our kids out to participate in sports and other activities, is there's a tendency to say, oh, well, it's only a rural school. Well, we have some absolutely amazing students in our school, and we need more resources. We need more music, we need more art, we need more science, we need more math. We just need everything. <laughs> we, yeah, we do. And, and, and to, like you said, to expose our students to Hawaii, 
first, and maybe the world, <laughs> being able to travel, yeah, and, um, and resources inside the classroom, they're becoming tighter and tighter. Um, so it, 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 makes it, it makes it challenging that way. Um, but good for donors choose, and we have a wonderful company, Pulama, that, that's been very supportive and involved in our school system, and it takes, it takes the whole community coming together, I think, to understand what our, what our challenges are. But um, we don't want to under underestimate what our kids can do. You know, Alberta, when I visited you uh, last time, gee, it must be a, a year or more ago, uh, you showed me a school that was under construction, remember? I, I think it was the elementary school, as a matter of fact. So, is that school finished? What's the status of you know the physical plan for the high school and the elementary school? They they haven't connected the internet or the telephone. So it makes it in this day and age not to have students, high school and middle school students, not have access to internet makes it extremely difficult to to do your job um, in the classroom. Um, and so that's a huge challenge. And and I don't know if it's politically correct to say I, I don't know why they don't they're not connected because um, those schools they've are, been using they, it since the start of yeah. the school year and they still don't even have telephones open. yeah no they don't have telephones so the uh, teachers have their own cell phones that they use but if there were an em emergency it would be a problem hmm. but not to be connected so it's it's not anything that we can correct locally here so Remember, it's an election year coming up, <laughs> so we all need to start lobbying the people that we want in office so that we can get more benefits on the LAE. It's, it's just, we have to struggle. And oh. we have people like uh, John Arnellis, who is going to be our, our guest next week. He has been, uh, remember the old SCBN, the school-based yes. community yes. management? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been on that forever, and SCBM is no longer active. It, they keep changing the name, and I know for people who are not in education, even for teachers in the, in the system, it just sounds like alphabet soup. I mean, they just keep yeah, they just it, keep changing the it. name, and yeah, I think it's SC SC something. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Pat Riley, who was a school counselor for almost thirty years, has been really active in pushing, helping to move things forward. But it's people like Pat Riley and John Ornelis and Butch Gima who have just constantly, constantly, constantly been banging on, knocking on the governor's door, going to the legislature to push for funds for Lanai. The fact that we have these new buildings, is new classrooms, it's almost a miracle considering where we are and everything, it's it's really interesting that we were finally able to do it, but it took 30 years. <laughs> it took 30 years to get them done. And the classrooms are beautiful. Yeah, okay. so we can live without telephone for maybe another year or internet for another six <laughs> or seven months. You know, the disconnect is that uh, must be about two years ago, maybe maybe less, uh, when the governor uh, got, got behind this broadband initiative. And the broadband initiative was, uh, you know, uh, an attempt, uh, or at least a statement of intention, um, to to bring broadband everywhere in the state, uh, especially places that didn't have any broadband, and and to give good, fast broadband to every place in the state. And Lanai would have been is a perfect a perfect object, a perfect target for that initiative. So it's an incomplete as far as the broadband initiative is concerned. And I think it should be fertile ground for communications to the governor uh, about the need to connect up the school. That, I mean, that is part of the initiative that he was urging maybe two years ago. Well, it would be great if we could get a free internet service covering the whole community. Mm -hmm. Whole community would be one big hot spot. Mm -hmm. that, that would be great. We're going to take one last, uh, we're gonna take one last break, if you, if you guys don't mind. Uh, and then I suppose we can talk about the performing arts. Yes. Um, so that's uh, Sandy Patterson on the right. She is a teacher extraordinaire uh, in Lanai. She's a portrait of Lanai. And our host in Lanai, uh, as always, is Alberta the Gently, journalist, farmer, lady about town. And uh, if you guys don't mind, we'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back. And, uh, and then we can complete the discussion uh, by talking about the L Lanai Academy of Performing Arts. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. We have some news for you. 
In addition to our Think Tech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Olelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechhawaii.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha, I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon, and we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on Think Tech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech Talks here on a given Wednesday. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking about Lanai, which is what we'd like to do on Wednesday afternoon. We're talking about portraits of Lanai with Sandy Patterson, who is our portrait of the day. She is the co-director of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts. And, of course, our host from Lanai is Alberta de Gently, journalist, farmer, lady about town. Uh, they join us by Skype, and we are broadcasting and live streaming from Pioneer Plaza in the core of downtown Honolulu. So, you were going to give us a little précis on what's happening in performing arts. Alberta, back to you. You know, we have so many nonprofits on the Na'i, and I'm involved with a great many of them. One of my very favorites, and I, I'm not on their board, so I can say what I want to say about them, <laughs> is the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts, because Sandy uh, Patterson and Matt Flixie, who was on one of our previous shows, are the co-founders of this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of students who just have done amazing things. Sandy, tell us a little bit about your role in starting it and where you're going now. Well, I just feel really blessed that I was able to meet Matt. Um, he was a uh, teacher's assistant at our school with amazing musical talent. And um, you just have to, he, yeah, well, he inspired um, us in the classroom as fourth graders to write our own um, play. So the students, we, we wrote Island Below the Star, which is based on a book um, about how Hawaii was discovered. And so we wrote the, the Reader's Theater and then it turned into a musical. And he, with the, um, some high school students, wrote all the music for the play. And the community, I have to say, was so supportive. Um, and we did it at the, I think it was the last performance at our theater before it's being re reconstructed. Um, and it was a hit. And we had the most amazing kids. They were, they just blew everyone's socks off. They are so talented. Um, and so we got real excited and we formed LAPA. And um, the kids performed up at the at the Kuele for the Christmas program and sang um, original songs written by, by other students and, and Mr. Glickstein. And um, now, because we saw The Lion King, now our next performance is going to be um, the 101 Dalmatians, which is a musical, which, this is where I get into the challenging part, we don't have a home. We had this beautiful piano donated to our, our theater group, and we have really no home to put it in because the theater is being um, refurbished, and uh, so, and I don't know if we will have a home at the theater. <laughs> um, and, and so I wanted to say thank you for, to, Alberta, who happened to get this baby grand piano donated to our theater. You, you know, people look at me as the everything lady. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so this um, part-time resident saw me at Blue Ginger. She had never met me before. She saw me sitting outside. I was waiting for a friend for a meeting. So she swung around the block and came back and said, are you Alberta? And I said, yes. She said, could you get rid of a baby grand? Could you find anyone to take a baby grand piano from me? And I looked at her and I said, are you serious? I said, yes. I said, give me five minutes. <laughs> and five minutes later, I had called Matt, made arrangements. We went up to look at the piano and it's a beautiful baby grand piano. And it's theirs, but they don't have any place to move it to yet. Not yet. We're hoping that we have a home at the theater, but that's still, we're not sure. With um, with all of the reconstruction going on, I don't know if that will be our home, but we, we definitely need a home for all our props and costumes and, um, and a place to perform. 
And our baby grand piano. Well, <laughs> and when Sandy was talking about Island Below the, the Star, she said the performance. They did five performances. Yeah, did five shows. And they were, every single one was sold out. Yeah, it, was sold out. it was amazing. I don't think we've ever <laughs> seen anything like it on the night before. But <laughs> it was so fun. So what about the, uh, the hotels? They seem to be a natural a natural uh, place, a natural venue for you. Um, would, you know, uh, how, how important are they going forward and how interested are they in having you perform there? Well, um, I, I, Coele has been so supportive with um, and inviting us to perform, but it's, it, it's not it's it's not a it's not a theater it's not really a theater where you where we have a stage and places to sit um there it's it's a pretty much this a stage the size of this table um so it it gets challenging when you have 30 30 kids and costume changes and uh and props and uh you know you're set so right now we're, we're struggling we did a little um anti-bullying um with the with uh, what was that called? The Youth Summit. And we did it at the county gym. And evidently, a long, long time ago, they used to perform in the county gym. But the acoustics, it's like, um, it's a gymnasium. So it sounds, it, it, it was challenging. It's very challenging. I'm hoping for someday for us to have a home and a theater. Uh, most high schools have small theaters and stages. Uh, we have a cafeteria that has a stage. But it'd be nice eventually down the road to have have a real theater. A real theater. A real theater. It doesn't have to be a fancy theater. <laughs> no, just... <laughs> we just need a place for them to call their own, where they can store their equipment and store their costumes. The music, the, the sound systems take up yeah. space. Um, well, you know, we, I suppose you talked about this with um, uh, Matt Glickstein, but uh, I guess the question that comes to mind is, you know, it sounds to me like this this enterprise, performing arts, is important for young kids. But how important is it, and why? Where does it fit in their education? Where does it fit in their lives? Why why is it especially important in Lanai? Um, do you want? Up to you. We really don't have a performing art um, curriculum at our at our school. Um, teachers will do plays or readers theater in the classroom. Most big high schools have a theater and a, and a, and a theater arts teacher. And the night we have not, we, we don't have anything like that. So um, Matt and I are doing, doing this um, after school. Um, and it's important because there's students who have, who aren't necessarily A students, but, but when you tap into that creative talent, whether it's singing or writing or performing, you see the spirit sparkle come out of them and you just pull you see this talented student who struggles in the classroom but shines on stage and we have, we have some pretty talented kids here in Lanai um, singers and actors and so I, for me I, I was a struggling student in, in school with, with math and, um, and thank goodness I had art teachers who saw something in me but I think we need to, to address all of their intelligences their creativity and their, their, they're just amazing kids. They deserve it. They, our kids deserve it. Well, you know, on Oahu, they go to Kailo High School for performing arts. And on Maui, they go to Baldwin High. They have excellent uh, art and academy programs, performing arts programs there. We can't put our children on a boat to go over to Baldwin. You might be able to, if you had a student who was really interested in it, we, maybe we could make arrangements for them to go as a high school student. But we're working with, what, fourth graders, 10-year-old students. And it goes back, it's not just the acting. It's their writing skills, their verbal skills, uh, just overall communication skills. And you see them grow from being very, very shy to being able to stand up and in front of a group of an adult, and I know adults that can't do that, so it's it's so important, I think, for our kids to have a venue. Um, even ma writing and making speeches and, and uh, debate team, we um, I don't. Do we, we have a debate team to share? We don't, and I think our. I mean, this is something you do in the real world in your job. You're debating all the. <laughs> 
the time and trying to communicate. It's all part of connecting Lanai and connecting these kids with the, the state and the world. And uh, Sandy, I think you're doing a great job at that. And Alberta, you're you're the um, you're the encouraged person, the person who uh, makes it happen. And I really appreciate you doing these portraits of Lanai. Thank you so much, Sandy, for being a portrait of Lanai. Thank you so much, Alberta, for making this happen. This is uh, Think Tech Talks. We're talking about portraits of Lanai as a matter of community. Community matters. We're talking about a teacher extraordinaire, Sandy Patterson, the co-director of the Lanai Academy of Performing Arts. Thank you so much, ladies. I hope to talk to you, you, you both soon, especially you, Alberta, next week for another show, another portrait of Lanai. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, you guys.